Okay, function operations. Boom, 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 boom. Functions can be combined using addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division to create a new function. Wow. So addition, if it says f plus g of x, that is the same thing as f of x plus g of x. Similarly, similarly for subtraction, that's f of x minus g of x, f of x times g of x, f of x over g of x. Okay? So the domain of the new function is the intersection of the combined functions. The domain is further restricted with the quotient, blah, blah, blah. We'll go through that. Okay, so given f of x and g of x, find the new function and state its domain. Now, if we have f of x plus g of x, or f plus g of x, that's the same as f of x plus g of x. So that's going to be x squared, sorry, I'm struggling, x squared plus x plus 3x minus 1. Combine terms, so that's x squared plus 4x minus 1. And the domain there is negative infinity to positive infinity. And you can see that if you graphed it in your function. And anytime you have an x squared graph, it's always negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, now for subtracting them, so we have f of x minus g of x. So we have x squared plus x minus 3x minus 1. Distribute that negative sign, so you get negative 3x plus 1, and that's going to be x squared minus 2x plus 1. And again, the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, f times g of x, so that's x squared plus x times 3x minus 1, which you end up getting x cubed minus x squared plus 3x squared minus x which is x cubed plus 2x squared minus x. And again, the domain there is negative infinity to positive infinity. Last one, f of x over g of x. So that's x squared plus x over 3x minus 1. And the domain there is x such that x cannot equal 1 third. Because this is kind of like the restrictions if you think back to when we were doing rationals. We have 3x minus 1 cannot equal 0, which means 3x cannot equal 1, which means x cannot equal 1 third. So that's where we got that from. Okay. Let's do another. So f of x plus g of x, x squared plus 9 plus the square root of x. Put it more in standard form there. My, now my domain is x such that x is greater than or equal to 0. Now, what I just said on the last slide was that anytime you have a squared that is negative infinity to positive infinity, that is only true if we also, if that's the only exponent power, if we don't have like a square root in there. So since we have a square root in there, that changes our domain. Graph this and find the, your domain that way. Okay, f of x times g of x, so that's x squared plus 9 times the square root of x. Now, the square root of x is the same as x to the 1 half power, so we can multiply that in. We have x squared times x to the 1 half plus 9 times x to the 1 half, which means 2 times 1 half, or x squared times x to the 1 half power is x to the 5 halves power. When you multiply exponents, so say you have x squared times x to the 1 half. That's the same as x 2 plus 1 half. Which 2, you can rewrite that as 4 over 2, which is x to the 5 halves. So that's where this came from. Okay? And the domain here is x such that x is greater than or equal to 0. And again, you can just put that into your calculator and find it that way. Okay, this last one. We have x squared plus 9 over the square root of x. We want to get rid of that square root of x, so we're going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of x. So you get x to the 5 halves plus 9x to the 1 half over x. And I got this top part because it is just the same as what we just got there. Cool? Domain x such that x is greater than 0. 
Now notice on all these it's greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to. This is just greater than. That is because x cannot equal 0 since x is in the denominator. Okay. Let's do this one. Oh, let's not do this one. We're skipping it. Yep. Let's do this one. Okay, so we have g minus f of x. So we're going to take our g, which is 2 over x plus 2, minus 1 over x. And we're going to subtract those. So we have to get a common denominator, distribute that subtraction sign first, multiply the first one by x over x, second one by x plus 2 over x plus 2. So you get 2x over x and x plus 2, plus negative x minus 2 over x and x plus 2 which you end up with x minus 2 over x and x plus 2. And the domain there is x such that x cannot equal 0 and it cannot equal negative 2. Because those are the restrictions. Okay, now g of x times f of x, we have 2 over x plus 2 times 1 over x, which is 2 over x times x plus 2. Domain is the same, x such that x cannot equal 0 or negative 2. Okay, if we divide this, we have 1 over x divided by 2 over x plus 2. Just write it this way, and then let's flip that. So you get x plus 2 over 2x. Domain is x such that x cannot equal 0. Okay? Let's look at this one. Given f of x, evaluate each function. So we have f plus g of 5. So that's going to be f of 5 plus g of 5. So plug 5 in for f, and you get 21, negative 21. Plug 5 in for g, and you get 18. So that's going to be negative 21 plus 18, which is negative 3. Okay, f times g of negative 2, which is f of negative 2 times g of negative 2. So f of negative 2 is 0. G of negative 2 is 4. 0 times 4 is 0. Cool? And then another method to combine functions is the composition of functions. So this is f of g of x, which is the same as f of g of x. So I want to write this down. If we have f of g of x... Whatever these last two are, so this right here, this is being put into the first one. So that's the same of, as f of g of x. So basically, we're plugging this in to the function f. Okay, so let's look at this. Now, if we have f of g of 3, that's the same as f of g of 3. I know I said that twice, but you can look at the notation a little bit differently. So we're going to find g of 3 first. So we have 3 plus 1, which is 4. Now we're going to take that 4 and replace it with the g of 3, and we're going to plug it into f. So f of 4 is negative 2 times 4, which is negative 8. The absolute value of negative 8 is positive 8. Okay, let's do this next one. So g of f of negative 5 Plug in negative 5, and you get 10. So we're going to find g of 10, which 10 plus 1 is 11, so that is 11. Okay, you can do example 7. That's what you should get for both of those. And let's look at this one. So we have f of g of x. So that's f of g of x. I'm going to take the g of x, so x squared minus 4, and I'm going to plug that into x. So that's going to be x squared minus 4 plus 7, which is x squared plus 3. And the domain there is negative infinity to positive infinity. g of f of x, f of x is x plus 7, so we're going to have x plus 7 squared plus minus 4, which x plus 7 squared is x squared plus 15x, that should be a 14. Oh, my Lanta, 14. You know, I was doing so good. That should be a 14, sorry. 
14 plus 49, that's going to go away, whoops, which is x squared plus 14x, 14, 14, sorry, plus 45. Okay, sorry I make so many mistakes. It probably drives you crazy. But again, we can learn from this. It is okay to make mistakes. Okay, guys? You learn the most from your mistakes. You really do. I've made a lot of mistakes in life, and I've also learned a lot from all of my mistakes. So just if you learn anything, I hope that's what you learn in here. <laughs> okay, let's look at this one. So f of g of x, we're going to plug in x over x plus 1 into f. So that's 3 minus x over x plus 1. We're going to distribute that negative on top, and I'm going to make that 3 a uh, fraction. So I'm going to multiply that by x plus 1 over x plus 1. So you get 3x plus 3 over x plus 1 plus negative x over x plus 1. So that's 2x plus 3 over x plus 1. Domain is x such that x cannot equal negative 1. Okay, if we look at this next one, g of f of x, plug in 3 minus x for that x. So we have 3 minus x over 3 minus x plus 1 which is negative x plus 3 over negative x plus 4. And the domain is x such that x cannot equal 4. Okay, skip the next examples. Remember to take the quiz. Remember it's okay to make mistakes, and we will learn from them always. You guys are awesome. Bye.